Hello, Charles Taylor here at Palais Arts with the magnificent Maureen Bowie. And Maureen is going to tell us about her art piece that is going to be in our jewelry show from now until May 14th. Thank you, Carol. Uh, this piece is called Shallow. Um, it's made up of a lot of individual squares, uh, all on the same, obviously, substrate, you know, once it's connected. Uh, it, is made of, it's made with a, a number of different materials. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's wood, it's paper, it's glue, it's paint. Um, the paper is crumbled when you apply it, when you're mixing the glue and the paint and everything. And to me, the crumble gives you kind of directional lines or veins, kind of moves your eye around the picture. Well, it, feels, it looks like stone, like some okay. kind of slate almost. Okay. Yeah, like, it does. Colors yeah, yeah everybody would get something different out of it, I guess. And yeah. it also reminds me of leather. Yeah. Because well, it reminds me of wax. turquoise as well because it has the same coloration and uh, you can see textured veining in it. Okay. Okay. And I like I like to push pattern into my work, so that's kind of where the squares came in with this. Mm -hmm. You know, how would it look to do individual squares and assemble? It's assemblage. Um, and then I well for years I've been I've worked in the decorative arts, so doing different finishes. So sometimes I just like to do what would be a finish in a sense, like it's um. It's about the surface. Mm -hmm. right. So the painting to me is about the surface and, you know. Which is funny because you sit, call it shallow and you're doing it about the surface and yet it looks so deep and we see these little areas that in some ways are almost like islands that are floating up or are they deep recesses that are occurring in the surface? Mm -hmm. I think, it, you know, it's it's the surface that gives you that thing, that the feel, I should yeah, say. Yeah, the texture. And I think it's the color that kind of takes you to maybe water or under the surface or, you know. Um, and then there's age involved. So, you know, with the black coming back through and also- So where's the black originally from? The base of it. I yeah, I think black. I'm curious as to how you made, like you said about the, so you've essentially made paper into tiles almost, the way that you've used the- Correct. The, so you treat, do you treat them with the color first? Or do you? The paper is treated first with the color. Okay. But then, and also it gets wet. So okay. Not not from the paint, but I put it in water. Mm -hmm. Oh. And then crumble it, and it becomes the paper becomes kind of gooey. So and then, then you basically you smooth that out onto there. Yeah, and then you apply it to whether it's the whole thing or if you you know some of my work does have a larger space yeah. with that in it. Um, in this case, they were applied to small tiles, mm -hmm. wood tiles. Um, and well, then, I've seen other works that you've done that are wood tile in that, that same kind of way, each with different grains of wood going in different directions. Okay, I'm trying to think of the piece, but I'm not sure right now, but I know, I'm sure you're talking about a certain piece. Um, and then also in incorporating the rust color and the age, I like to experiment, so I put cinnamon in it. Oh. While obviously it was all wet with glue and uh, it has a spritz of some rusty colored paint too. So it, it's to going to be the best smelling piece you've ever seen. <laughs> Actually, the cinnamon smell is gone because now it, you know the wax took over. <laughs> so, and the wax smell is gone to me too, but it kind of, you know, put it within the piece, the yeah. wax. So, and so it, it settles it down and gives it that beautiful luster surface because um, I take it that before you put the wax on, it didn't have this soft kind of luster. No, it and it gets that. sealed also before mm. you put the wax on or the wax would be um, going into a porous surface. So oh. you want to seal it so the wax kind of sits on top and that's what creates your leathery looking finish. Yeah. As I told you, I'm going to ask you about the grid because the grid, particularly in modern art, is a very big thing. And you didn't choose to make each one of these tiles a different shape. Each one is approximately the same shape and it's fitted together perfectly to make you know something that goes like this. An approximate mm -hmm. grid, yeah. So were you thinking of it in a way that is like the modern grid? Or were you thinking of it because this looks topographical, more like uh, longitude, longitude and latitude. latitude? Yeah. I can't say I went to longitude and latitude. I think um, I was thinking it, you know, grid and pattern. Mm -hmm. So to me, the pattern being the grid would be squares. I debated on separating them as if it were tile, mm -hmm. you know, with grout in between. Yeah. Or putting them together, yeah. And I just thought, let me put them together because you're you're going to see the lines, and I didn't want it separated. It just makes me feel like Agnes Martin. Okay, okay, with her stripes, yeah. in a sense, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when you thought about this, like, um, 
do you think of them? I'm assuming that you thought of them as a grid as opposed to individually as individual tiles. But did you approach this when you started aging them and adding like treatments to them, like layering that? Did you think of them holistically or individually as spaces or somewhere in between? I was thinking that they were all going together and that in doing them separately, it gives you, it cuts it off. Mm -hmm. So therefore that one square stands out, not just because of the lines, but it might cut the vein, yeah. the veins off if you could see them from the camera. So, um, and we'll try, like, we'll obviously try to get a really good detail in there, but it also makes the point that people need to come see this in real life. Um, but I think that, that that makes sense to me in the way that you have the veining transferring from one to the other, which goes in such nice juxtaposition to the grid because you have this very, you can't see my hands, but I'm making squares. Yeah. Um, and then you have a more flowing. I think it separates each tile, uh, yet it gives you um, variety. It gives uh, variety. It keeps the eye moving. Yes. Meaning yeah. that they start and stop. Yeah. So yeah. the other part that I really appreciate about your having done it this way is on one, number one, I would carefully move my hand over this. The surface is amazing. The surface is amazing, but I can also see vis visually as well as feel that some things, I actually thought some of this might be thread that was put on or something like because that. Because of those veins, yeah. Yeah, they're, they, they rise off the surface. And then you have other ones that appear to be carved in. So I was wondering if like you had taken a tool and carved no, in. No, no. So I mean, it probably got sanded back and that's where I wanted some of them to have some black lines around them. And then, you really can't even say it, even with us right here, we're not focused on it, but there is some writing. Um, I, oh, I did see that. I noticed that. But like, it was just subtle enough that it didn't... How do you just, you. how do you decide where you're, where and what you're, because writing figures prominently into your work, there's always little hidden messages and things like that, that sometimes, the most, most times the messages only you know. How, uh, how do you decide where to put them? Like, with, in terms of design, how do you decide how to incorporate like that? Well... This piece was pretty much done. Mm -hmm. And I think I went into it a day later, you know, whenever I decided it was done and just scribbled some stuff because, you know, I always have some writing in my work. Mm -hmm. And then literally when you first write it, you could wash it right off. Mm -hmm. But then it, it, if you leave it, it stays because it's in it. Mm -hmm. But right. in the beginning, you can wipe it back off. So if I didn't like it, I'd wipe it back off. Oh. Which I've done before. Like, that doesn't look good there. Well, I don't like how forced that might look. Yeah. And it, it never says anything. I just start to... Where it doesn't, they're so not you, words. People think they're words, though. So well, they look like scripts. They look like yeah. scripts. Because you can't tell if it's some language that I don't know. And apparently it is because it's Maureen's language. Yeah, because Maureen knows what she's intending to write. And she's just like, that's for me, guys. I put the thoughts yeah, in. I mean, it could be French, right? <laughs> <laughs> so. or, or Sanskrit. We don't know. I have no idea. One of the things I really enjoy about this, and I think you're going to get into something like this, too, is the way that you have gone and segmented it into grids, you are able to look at it holistically and absorb it holistically, but then you've created these little pocket-sized squares that you can go in and explore individually. So each one of them, uh, Carol always talks about when she hangs the show, everything has its independent space, but they all talk to each other. And I feel like that's very true in this piece um, because you have some that transcend through. But on the other hand, each one of these is like a little nugget in and of a little being in and of itself. Yeah, I think once you start to examine it or look further into it, that's when you start to look at each square maybe more individualized. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You start to see too that some squares are darker than others. It almost seems like there's this little light source here, which is something that occurs in water. And this seems in so many ways to relate itself to water, mm -hmm. not just color wise, but also there's like these little reflective areas here that are lighter and that are darker. Yeah, like the name makes you think it could be really shallow. That's why mm -hmm. you're seeing the bottom. Maybe this is the bottom and you're seeing through water because of the blue color. Right. And what's so interesting about water in that way is that sometimes it does look shallow. Sometimes it's actually really deep, even though it looks shallow. And even this piece, it's called shallow, but you've gone through so many layers that you can't help but it's a deep process and it's a deep piece. Yeah, so I guess that was a good name. I like it. <laughs> it came out later, you know, when you're trying to name something. No, but it, like on the one hand, this does seem to relate to water. And then it's the impossible that only an artist could come up with that it's water that's been cut into sections, segmented. I like so, that view. Yeah. I like that view too. I'm it's much better than the earlier one. <laughs> <laughs> So 
show. Please come see Maureen's beautiful piece that's in our jewelry show from now to May 14th. You did it. Thank you, Carol. Thank you.